I would like you to stand and to welcome David on our platform this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can be seated. Thank you, God. What an amazing honor and a privilege to be uh, in South Africa. I was actually born in South Africa many, many, many years ago. And uh, I now live in the United States, but I've lived in Australia. I've lived in Hawaii. I've lived in New York and so California. So I've really seen a whole, um, just a whole oversight of what God is doing around the world. And it's amazing to be back here. And this is only my second year that I've actually been ministering in South Africa. And so I'm really excited because this is such a Kairos time. How many of you sense that we are in a Kairos time? That we are in a divine time with God? That things are happening all around the world? That God is moving the church from membership to kingdomship? That we need to sort of understand how the kingdom of God operates. But how many of you realize that when we're in these times of moving and transformation and reformation, that we actually have to start to discern the season. What season am I in? Can we discern the season? And that's what I want to speak about this morning. I want to speak about, do everything there is a season? And if you're part of the kingdom of God, you'll be part of a season. And so let's just pray this morning that we really understand and grasp, because this is a prophetic message. This is not just some sermon outline that I've, I got on Friday night. This is a message that I've walked with for many, many years. And I really believe that the church needs to start to discern the season she's in. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace, God, that you are just such, such a gracious, gracious, gracious Father. We thank you that you so desire for us to walk in destiny and into purpose. And so, Father, this morning, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you, Lord, that as I speak this word, it'll go into good soil. And everybody said, amen. amen. Can you understand my accent? Okay, that's good. Praise God. There's many places where we have to almost have an interpreter with me. Um, that's why I bring um, Colin, because he can interpret in Australia. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So let's go quickly to the Word. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. If you've got your Bibles with you, let's go to Ecclesiastes and see, because that's where I'm going to spend most of my time today, just speaking about seasons, how to discern your season, what's going on in the seasons of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, let's go there and uh, let's see what it says. But <clears throat> how many of you realize that in all our lives, everything that we do will incorporate seasons? How many of you sense that God works in cycles? He works in cycles. If you're a farmer, I'm from breeding, from farming stock. All my great-grandfathers great were farmers out in Rustenburg and Northam and in the Karoo. They all farmed and, um, and, and, you know, they always used to say, well, we have to wait for the right cycle. You know, the seasons, the rain cycles have to be right. And so I, I sense in my spirit, even this morning, that most of you sitting in this room are in a season. You may not be able to discern the season. It may be a, an unfamiliar season. It may be a learning season. It may be a, a season of change. You, you just sense that there's something happening in my life. And, and you know what? I, can I just say this? If you're a son or daughter of God, if you're a child of God, you need to experience change. We can't just be the same we were when we first got saved. There has to be this journey that we go on. And in my own life, I can tell you there's been many times that I've had to discern the season that God has had me in. Is this a waiting season? What do I do in the season when nothing's going on? Nothing's going right. How do I discern the season when everything's going right? And how do I determine and administrate all that stuff? Amen, come on. Maybe you're in a season of waiting, just waiting. Uh, you know, I can't, um, I don't understand what a woman feels like when she's pregnant and she's, she's, and she's carrying that baby, you know, for nine months and the waiting and the excitement. I would never know what that would be like as a man. Amen. Waiting for the right opportunities to happen. And so let's go and have a look in the scripture in what God is saying to us. 
It says, to everything there is a season and a time for every matter or purpose under heaven. You see, we've got to discern the purpose of God in the season so that when we understand the purpose, we then understand the process. How many of you know that in everything there is a purpose and a, pro and a process? And in other words, if we miss the process, we don't understand the purpose. Amen, come on. There always is a process to something. God wants to bring us into this time where he starts to teach us how to wait on God. He starts to teach us how to build character. He starts to teach us how to live out of the, the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, there's, how many of you know that patience is a great test? Waiting on God. What is the season? What's the season going to produce in my life? And so it says here, it says in Ecclesiastes chapter three, it says, to everything there is a season and a time for every matter or purpose under heaven. A time to be born. How many of you are excited about your, born, your birthday? Two of you, that's great. <laughs> I know the older they get, we don't want to really celebrate them after 50. But isn't it amazing when we're 15, we want to celebrate until we get to 20 because we're not 20 yet. And then when we get to 30, it's like we start slowing down in the enthusiasm. And then when we get to 50, it's like, don't talk to me about my birthday. But you know what? Let me tell you something. We should celebrate our birthdays. Because when you were born on the earth, something happened in heaven and God released you on the earth to fulfill destiny. Amen. Come on. A time to die. Listen to me. I, I want to tell you, don't be fearful of death. Many people are saying, oh, don't talk to me about death. No, death is a celebration. It's a graduation. Amen. Come on. It's amazing. I, you know, this week I actually lost a very dear friend of mine back in America. I actually, the day I flew out, he passed away. Young man of 31 years old. And I was amazed how many people wrote to his wife, Laura, we are so sorry for your loss. What an absolute travesty that we would write there for, you know, sorry for your loss. We should be writing, praise God for his graduation. Because when you die, you actually graduate. Yes, amen. amen, come on. Death, where is thy sting? Yes. So we need to start celebrating those things that people don't normally celebrate. Now, I'm not going to celebrate your death today. Don't worry, you. no one's dying today. But, but how, how about a time to plant, a time to pluck up? You see, sometimes we, we know how to plant, but we don't know how to pluck up the old harvest. And some of you are trying to get into your new field with an old harvest. It's time to pluck up. It's time to move. Amen? Time to weep, a time to laugh. When last did you laugh in your season? When last did you say, God, I thank you that this is going to be a season of joy, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones. I just pray nobody gathered any stones this morning. <laughs> a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, a time to speak. How many of you have ever been in that situation where you just thought, man, I just put my foot in my mouth? How many of you know that the church many times battles with foot and mouth disease? <laughs> when we're supposed to be speaking, we don't speak. And then when we're supposed to speak, we don't speak. Or when we're not supposed to speak, we speak. And God says we need to learn in the season when to keep silent. Just to wait on the Lord. God, I'm not going to bring you my shopping list today, but God, I'm just going to wait upon you and I'm going to sense, God, what are you saying to me in this season? Sometimes we can go into the presence of God with our long shopping list instead of just going in and saying, God, I'm just going to love on you today like never before so that I can receive what you are saying to me. Amen. A time to love. I want to tell you right now, there's no such time in history as now that we need to be loving unconditionally like never before. A time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace. Verse 10, it says, I've seen the painful labor and exertion and miserable business which God has given to the sons of men with which to exercise and busy themselves. God knows exactly what you're doing every single day. It says in verse 11, he says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. And, and we say, but God, it doesn't seem to be beautiful right now. 
It doesn't look beautiful. It, 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 there's nothing happening in my life. No, there's no breakthrough. God, how can it be beautiful? God says, if you will just stay the course and keep the process, everything that looks unbeautified will become beautiful. Amen. Amen. It's how you stay in that season. I'm telling you today, I know what I'm speaking about. If we can just stay in the course that God has put us in and we, with great endurance, with great long suffering, with great patience, will see the process through, the purpose will become clear to us. And so I I want to encourage you today. I really want to encourage you. And I've said this over the last couple of days. Some of you have heard me say this. Sometimes for you to do, for you to accomplish, God is going to have to undo some things to redo some things. In other words, we have to become so brutally honest in our lives and say, God, for me to accomplish what you've called me to do, God, will you undo things in my life so that you can redo some things? In other words, you're going to have to understand God's developing you in the purpose to walk into your season with great faith. God's developing all of us. How many of you know that every one of us are being developed every single day? How many of you know that God puts people in our path just to develop us? Amen? It's like sometimes they're like, there's people come along your life and they're like, like, uh, um, um, what's that paper call that you use? Sandpaper. Now, can I tell you something about the Australians? You know, when the Australians won, you know, I lived in Australia. I actually travel. Let me show you. I'll prove it to you. I actually travel on many passports, but I travel on the Australian passport because it's the easiest passport to have and you get into any country you want. Amen. Come on. It's better to travel on an Australian than an American passport. I'm even not going to speak about the South African passport. (laughs) I'm telling you, I was was traveling to Denmark on the South African passport, and they locked me up for two hours. Blonde eyes, those days a little bit more blonde hair, but they locked me up. Then I went to Switzerland on a South African passport, the same thing happened. They locked me up and interrogated me. I'm thinking, I'm never going to travel on that passport again. I'll I'll travel on my Australia. But you know, the Australians know how to get people really riled up. You know what that means? When they win the rugby, you never hear the end of it. (laughs) I'm telling you, they win the rugby. Like when I lived in Australia, I shouted for whoever was going to win. And so if they won, I'd say, yes, praise God. Thank you for the wallabies. But deep down inside of me, God knew I was actually shouting for the Springboks. And so the Australians know how to be sandpaper. But how many of you know that God brings people across our path that can be sandpaper? And we may not understand it. We may not understand the process. God, what are you doing? Why am I working with all these people that are continuously just harassing me? God, what are you doing? And it's like I've learned in life that wherever God places me, I need to bloom where I'm planted. I need to emerge as whoever God wants me to be in that situation. Amen? Come on. And I really believe sometimes we don't understand the, the process and we miss out on the development and we never walk in great faith. Because we've allowed circumstances to keep us, you know, dwarfed and suppressed. Let's go to Philippians 1.6. And I love the way Paul writes Philippians 1.6. And this ought to give you hope this morning. I really believe there are people here this morning that need to have hope. You need to realize the process, the purpose. You need to start to discern your season. Am I in a waiting season? Am I in a building season? What type of season am I in in this, in this time of the year? It's 2019. Next year is 2020 and I can guarantee you God does not want you to go into the next year the same way you came out of this year. God wants you to be different because when I read Philippians 1 6 and Paul writes this so brilliantly it says here in in 1 6 it says um, this this I am convinced and sure of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it into full completion in you. What does that mean? It means you are in a process of perfection. While you're sleeping, while you're eating, while you're sitting in church, God is developing you. That ought to get you really excited. 
That everything that God put inside of you is bringing to completion so that when the day of Jesus comes, you will stand before Him totally perfected in all the glory of God, in all the fullness of who God is. Amen. Come on. You will not lack any good thing in the season ahead. God is building His church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so when I look at that, I realize that we are in the process of being perfected, amen. Look, look at me, sometimes I look in the mirror and I don't see a lot of perfection. My wife does. But I know that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in my life. But I'm convinced of this very thing that he who started the good work will bring it to completion. There's something supernatural happening in my life every day. But you know, unfortunately, we have a theology of, of only living from a place of victory. Well, if you're not living from a place of victory, something's wrong in your life. And unfortunately, we've built a theology around only victory. But, but how do we cope when we find ourselves in a valley? How do you cope when you've been overlooked or misunderstood or you've been left alone or misquoted? Anybody here been misquoted before? Don't put your hands up. Anybody here that's ever been misunderstood, mistreated, overlooked for promotion, you thought you weren't going to get the promotion, the guy that you really hated in the office next door, he got the promotion? How do you cope when you're in the valley? How do you cope when you've been praying and praying for your loved ones and they die? How do you cope with the this, this stress? How do you cope with the pressure and all the stuff that goes on in your life? Have you ever realized that sometimes those valleys could be the right place at the right time for God to build character in your life? Amen, come on. How do you deal with all those things? When you, you, you know, I remember when I lived in South Africa and the ministry was doing well way back. I went into ministry in 1990 full time in the ministry and God used us all around South Africa. And then suddenly God spoke a word to me and said, I'm taking you to America. And I want you to realize that America will be a Bible school to you. Although I'd been to Bible school, God says, I'm going to use America to teach you. And I, we didn't know anybody in America. And out of the blue, uh, um, um, uh, we got an invitation from Rick Joyner and we moved over there and there was no salary. There was nothing that they could give us. They, they couldn't afford us. But you know, we lived by faith in America for eight years. There was no income from anybody. Only God supplied our needs. It was a miracle. It was like God took my faith, which was two pieces of fish and five loaves, and turned it into eight years. And then suddenly I got a call from Australia, and they said, would you come to Australia? We'll give you a house. We'll give you this. We'll give you a salary. We'll give you everything. We want you to be part of our team. We want you to come in. So we left America, and we moved to Australia. And two weeks after we arrived in Australia, the man that invited me sat me down and said, sorry, we're not going to give you the salary. We're not going to give you the house. We're not going to give you anything. You're on your own. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with a wife? That, that thought that she was going to go to Australia and everybody was going to look after us. How do you deal with children that were in those conversations? Suddenly you're standing alone and you're in this valley and you think, God, what is going to happen to us? And you, and you, and you don't understand the season. Listen to me. I, listen to me. I don't care what season I'm in. All I know that whatever season I'm in is building character in my life to get to the next field. There are great opportunities waiting for you, but we've got to discern our season. And I'll never forget it. I said to that man, I don't care what you brought me in. I don't care if you can't give me a house or car, but I do know this, that God is my source. And we stayed in Australia and I, you know, we, we weren't there with them very long, obviously, um, but we were there long enough to get our, our, all our paperwork and we became um, um, citizens. And I started a church and I want to tell you, God used the church and touched most of the nation of Australia because I waited upon him. Amen. I didn't pack my little bags and get into, you know, sulk and, and leave Australia. I stayed in Australia and I said, God, I want Australia to know that you're a God of generosity and peace and power. I'm not just going to move because of some guy's inability to discern things. Amen. Sometimes you may walk into a job and it may not be what you thought it would be. Why, aren't, why don't you stay there as a Joshua? Why don't you stay there as a servant of God and say, God, I'm going to do everything I can to change the situation instead of run from the situation. Amen, come on. And I, I can't tell you how many times, you know, we've been overlooked and we don't understand that season. 
And, and God says, if you will just understand that in that season, I'm actually developing you. I'm developing you. I'm giving you great character to go to the next field. Amen. Listen to this very carefully. Prophecy. That's why I love to see prophecy operate in the church because the prophetic will give you direction to your promise. God will always give you the right direction. Amen. Come on. God will never bring um, confusion. But between the promise and the provision, there's a process. We've got to understand. We've got to start to focus on the process and not spin out of control and not spin out and lose the why of the season. Why am I in this season, God? Let's just, let's just see what God wants to do because sometimes you've got to live. How many of you have how many of you've ever been in the in-between season? You're in between two seasons. It's like, I've just come out of this season and I'm in between two seasons. How do I negotiate my life when I don't know what the next season's gonna give me? How do I know how to stand? What do I pray when I'm between two seasons? I mean, I can tell you in, in my life as a South African moving to America and having to relinquish my South African citizenship and not being a citizen of every nation. And there I was. I was no citizen. I wasn't a citizen of South Africa, wasn't a citizen of Australia, not a citizen of anything. I'm just there. And I'm saying, saying okay, God, what am I? Because in America, they call you an alien. So for like on many years, it's like, oh, you come to our office, you know, they, they, they address the letter, alien. You're an immigrant alien. So for a lot of years, I was an alien. So men in black movies really, really ministered to me. Some of you are in between two seasons. Some of you've come out of a season of great joy and suddenly you're in a valley of pain and misery and you don't know what's going on. And God says, if you will just know how to navigate the in-between season, I will bless you in your next season. Amen. Because Ruth was there. Little Ruth that, that, that was in Moab. Her, Naomi came there with her husband and the two sons and Naomi's sons, they married, you know, Ruth and Oprah got married to these people. And let me just take you to Ruth chapter one because she knew she had to, she was in between two seasons. She, there were some things that Ruth had to relinquish in her life. Let's go quickly to Ruth and see what it says there in Ruth um, chapter one, verse 15. Ruth knew that she had to relinquish some things in her life to be able to get into her new season. Some of you have not relinquished. You have not given up. You're still holding on to the old um, harvest, the old stuff from years and years ago. And you're trying to bring your old harvest, your old luggage into this new season. And God says, you can't do that. You've got to relinquish your old harvest to take hold of your new field. Amen. Amen. Come on. You can't take what's worked last year into this season. And that's the mistake we make. So listen to what it says in chapter one, Ruth chapter one. Are you guys okay? Yes. And Naomi said, verse 15, see your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. Why? Because her season was about to change. It says, and Naomi and Ruth said, urge me not to leave or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And where, there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said no more. In other words, she knew, Ruth knew she had to leave her old harvest behind to be in position to find her new field. Don't miss out on the opportunity because you're locked into the struggle instead of seeing the future. Let me say that again. Don't make the mistake of missing out on the opportunity because you're locked into the struggle instead of seeing the future. Because sometimes the enemy will keep you in your struggle. The devil wants you to struggle. He wants you to focus on everything that's going wrong. He wants you to focus on all the stuff you've lost and all the people that hate you and everything that's going wrong. You need to stop that stuff, focus on the process so that you, got, you can allow God to prepare you for the next season of your life. Amen, come on. I don't, listen to me, I don't, take, I don't, give, I don't give the devil one second. 
Because I'm consistently focused on the future, on the purpose, on the opportunity. And when the struggles come, I discern, God, I'm struggling in this valley because I know that you're trying to deal with me. Amen? Isn't it amazing that we'll, we'll blame everybody else? Well, I'm battling today because she's so bad, he's so bad, they did me so bad, they did me in. I'm struggling today because this one did this. And No, no, stop that nonsense. Get out of that whole thing and sort of focus on the fact that God's trying to get your character to a new place, your faith to a new place. So in actual fact, you should thank your enemies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me read this again. Don't miss out on the opportunity because you're locked into the struggle instead of seeing the future. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11. Some of you have heard me say this a hundred times this weekend. And by the way, we have been so blessed and so honored in this house. And I want to tell you, I want you as a church to really give a big clap offering to your leadership. What an honor. What an honor. You know, let me tell you, I meet leaders, and by meeting leaders, I know who their leader is. And I want to tell you, I want to commend you as a church that you have a spirit of hospitality. You have a spirit of generosity. You guys are so kind and faithful. And I believe that God is going to do such extraordinary things through this house. Amen. Amen. And so Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11. Jeremiah, what do you see? God says to Jeremiah, what do you see? Jeremiah says to him, I see the branch of an almond tree blossoming and budding in late winter. Well, let me ask you a question. If you lived, I came from, I still call it the Western Transvaal. That way I'm from. When I left, it was still the Western Transvaal. So I haven't I've gone into the new phases and phrases. So where I grew up in Stilfontaine, it was ice cold in winter. Nothing bloomed in winter. So what was Jeremiah actually seeing? He was seeing the impossible. He was actually speaking an impossible vision. I see the branch of an almond tree blossoming in late winter. What does God say right after that? He says, Jeremiah, now that you have seen well, now I can accomplish my word. So let me ask you, ma'am, sir, what, what are you seeing in your season? What are you wanting to see in your season? Can you see something good in your season that's not even there? How have you made up your mind? What are you going to say in the season where there's strife and famine or whatever season you're in? Are you going to be determined to see what God sees or are you just going to echo what you see? In other words, what is your confession going to be in the season that you're in? What are you going to be saying in the season? Oh God, I'm going to say that all is well in Jesus' name. That I'm going to go in and possess the land. I mean, there was a woman, a prophet said to the woman, you're going to have a child in nine months. And she said, don't lie to me, man of God. I don't want any. And in nine months he has a child. That child grows up and guess what happens to the promise? It dies. And it says on her way to the prophet, she's riding on a donkey or a horse, and they say to her, how are you doing? And you know what she says? It is well. Hallelujah. When are you and I going to start to rise up above all the voices that are around us all the time and say, it is well with us in Jesus' name. We are going to start to speak what we don't see. We're going to start to proclaim and declare what we don't see yet because we know God has a season of breakthrough for us. And we're going to go in and we're going to possess the land. And we're going to take back everything that the devil has stolen because I've made up my mind to see it the way God sees it. Come on, let's give God a hand. We've got to see it the way God sees it. You've got to get into agreement with God. Amen, come on. Because let me give you some examples. David, listen to me. David could not avoid Goliath. It was part of the plan of God. Now, if it was me, I would have said, God, could you, could you send someone else to fight that dude? Or give me a machine gun or a shotgun or something because that guy is too big. But David, it was part of the process in the life of David to kill Goliath with a, with a stone and a sling. Couldn't avoid Goliath. And some of you sitting in this room are, are trying to avoid the Goliaths in your life that God has set up for you to kill. The Goliath is not there to destroy you. You, you actually have some Goliaths in your life so that you can become mature. 
Amen, come on. David couldn't avoid Goliath. Peter could not avoid walking on the water. He was in the boat and, and they saw Jesus coming on the sea and they thought it was a ghost. And Peter says, hey, Jesus, if that's you, tell me to do something. And Jesus says, okay, Peter, come to me on the water. Couldn't avoid it. Jesus summoned him. And he got up and, and got out of the boat. And it was amazing, not all of the 11 followed. I think Judas was sitting there thinking, if Peter drowns, I'm giving those shoes. I'm, I'm buying those shoes. I'm selling those shoes. <laughs> Joseph could not avoid jail. Joseph the, the boy that his dad loved and adored, worked for Potiphar, was a, such a servant of God, but he couldn't avoid jail. It almost seems so bad. It's almost like this is not fair. Why would Joseph, this amazing young man, land up in jail for all those years because somebody lied about him? But it was part of God's plan. And some of you may even feel like you are in a captivity that somebody else orchestrated. It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. They made a bad accusation and suddenly you are in a situation that you'd never created and you aren't, can't understand why you're there. Well, guess what? God's got you there for a purpose and for a reason. Amen? Come on. Sometimes we can't avoid some things. There's some things. Daniel couldn't avoid the lion's den. It was going to happen. And sometimes we're trying to avoid the very things God wants to use to build character. The last one, Jesus could not avoid the cross. Jesus couldn't avoid Gethsemane. He couldn't avoid going to the cross. It was part of the redemption plan. Jesus could have said to his father, you know what, dad, that's cool with you, but I don't want to go to the cross. He could have said that. But it says that he said, not my will be done, but your will be done because of the plan, the redemption plan that had to um, take place so that mankind, humanity, could once again be reconnected to the Father. These are all things that we look at. Don't stop in the in-between season. Don't stop. Don't, don't lose momentum. Because if you try to avoid the process, because in the process of your season, the purpose will be defined. Stop trying to avoid the process, because in the process of your season, the purpose is being defined. And when I read all these things in the Bible, how men did not stop, right at the brink of breakthrough, they moved in. God says, now I'll use them for my glory. Right now, while you're sitting, listening to this message, I believe that God is, is defining some things in your life. Your vision's been defined. Faith is being defined. Um, um, joy is being defined. Commitment's been defined. All those things are defined. You know, I'll never forget it when the day before I got married. I was 26. My wife was 31. I got myself a cougar. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I was 26, never been married before. And my wife was 31, never been married before. And uh, when I met her, I just knew that I knew that I knew in my Noah that she was going to be my wife of my youth. But I didn't, understand, I didn't know how old she was. And when she met me, uh, she said to me, how old are you? I said, I'm 30. Because I didn't know what was going to happen with this chick. And uh, I took her home. I'll never forget. I, I, I had to impress this girl. And, you know, I used to be a game ranger. I used to work in the bush, take people on safaris and stuff. And she used to work for Estee Lauder. <laughs> See the contrast? I mean, a <laughs> big contrast. I, I, I used to walk around in fallies, you know, short khaki pants, khaki shirt. I used to wear feathers and things in my ears. And I was just very bushy and loved the bush, eat with my, I mean, I was just into it. And, she, and I met this girl with Estee Lauder. I mean, she dressed up like a princess. She drove a BMW. I used to drive an old uh, Renault that the door still opened this way. <laughs> you know, 1964 Renault. And so I never talked about my Renault much. Um, she used to say, what do you drive? I said, no, I drive a sports car, you know. <laughs> and so I'll never, I need to tell the story because um, I found myself uh, in, a, in the process of wanting to marry this girl. And so on the way, I grew up in the big town of Stillfontaine. 
And on the way to Sylvendane, we were driving in her BMW and on the, on the side of the road, there was a sign that said sheep for sale. Just by there by Soweto, there was, they always sold sheep next to the road. And so I pulled up, she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm gonna buy a sheep. <laughs> she said, what? I said, yes, I'm gonna buy a sheep. We're going home, I need to bring some stuff. <laughs> and so I walked down into the gully there and I looked, you know, I, I wanted to make sure she could see, but she had no clue, but I at least wanted to buy a sheep with some teeth. <laughs> you never wanna buy a sheep with no more teeth. I mean, if those things got no more teeth, you don't even wanna eat it. So I'm, look, I'm opening the sheep's mouths, looking in the mouths and I'm making sure she can see. I'm looking for the teeth. And so then I bought the sheep and I tied it up and I carried it up into, into, onto the road. And she opened her trunk and in her trunk was all her boot, her boot was all her cosmetics. So I laid the sheep gently amongst her cosmetics. <laughs> See, I was in a season of courtship. And I, in my mind, thought anything, I need to do everything I can to win her over. And in my mind, I thought, if she just saw that I was a hunter and gatherer. <laughs> little did I know that she was a bear hugger and a tree hugger. <laughs> she was like on the edge of being a vegan. And then all the way from there to Clarkstorp, that, that little sheep bleated in the back. <laughs> and then that sheep smell came through into the car and I could just imagine of all the stuff that was going on in amongst her cosmetics. And I'll never forget, I thought she was white, but she actually became whiter. She had this white complexion and she never said another word. And so when I got home and I opened the truck, that sheep had wriggled free and the back of the trunk of this BMW looked like a sheep crawl. <laughs> and the sheep jumped right out of the car and was running around the garden. And I was running after the, the sheep with a big old copy knife, ready to kill it. And it took me a long, long time to actually catch the sheep. And by the time I could slit its throat, it was, it was just a mess. Couldn't even eat the meat. And you know what she said to me? She said, I must love you a whole lot. <laughs> because she, saw, she thought in her mind she is marrying a lunatic. <laughs> but I won. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That was my valley. That was my, the process that I was in to try and court this woman. Amen, come on. I'm surprised you didn't put on your skins now and, and start to do like a little bit of a Zulu dance for her and show you how, you know, I don't know. But anyway, you know, it, what I'm trying to say is sometimes we don't understand the season we're in. And in that moment of time, I thought I was doing everything I could to actually win her heart. Amen, come on. And it was an amazing season for us. And you know, we only courted for four months and we got married. Now, I wouldn't do that again because the first seven years of my marriage was war. You know, you, you only meet someone for four months and then you marry them and, and then you wake up next to him the next morning and think, man, I don't even know this person. Amen. So it's taken me 32 years to know her and I still don't know her. <laughs> See, people, sometimes we don't understand the season we're in. Amen. And so I want to just give you four ideas. I've called them ideas. You, call, you can call them su suggestions. You can call them principles. But let's just look at four different things, I believe, in response to this message that you can actually write down and say, God, okay, I'm in a season. How many of you, let me just see your hands. How many of you feel you're in a season? You're in a season of in-between. You Just let me see your hands again. How many of you sense? I mean, look around. Everybody's in a season. And so number one, it's a place you determine your focus. You've got to determine your focus. Don't give up in the season. You've got to birth what you're carrying. You've got to choose. You've got to say, God, I am bringing forth something in the season. I'm not gonna abort my dream. I'm not gonna abort my joy. I'm not gonna abort anything in my life. I'm gonna, excuse me. I'm gonna carry this thing to, to, to the fullness. Amen, you've got to determine your focus. Who are you focusing on in this time in your life? Amen. Number two, it's a place you determine your dependence. 
Can I just go to Psalm 63 real quick? I want to just read Psalm 63 to you because David so well, he, he does this so well, he illustrates his total dependency. Psalm 63, it says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I will seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you in a dry and weary land where there, there is no water. So I've looked upon you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. So will I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My whole being shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Totally dependency on God. God says, I will, I will feed you. I will bless you. But you've got to get up and find the manna. Do you understand what that says? God says, I've got a promise for you, but you've got to seek me. You've got to knock on the door. You've got to continuously seek my face because I've got so much for you. Amen? How many of you just need to hear this morning that God loves you, that he trusts you. How many of you realize that he put his spirit, of, uh, you know, the spirit of God is in you. God says, I'm trusting you with my spirit. I've trusted you with my word. Amen, come on. You are his beautiful bride. Amen. But we've got to be dependent on him. I cannot depend on man. I cannot depend on the court system. I cannot depend on the government. I have to depend on God. Amen. My dependency is on God. Amen, come on. Number three, it's a place we decide who to trust. I have decided to trust God. My trust is in God. Freedom is waiting for you in this truth. There will be no freedom, there will be no peace unless you trust God. Trust Him. Psalm 73, let's read Psalm 73, trust. So the first one is this. It's a place you determine your focus. It's a place you determine your dependence. And it's a place you determine your trust. Who are you going to trust? In the season when nobody's talking to you. When nothing's happening, you can't get an answer from anybody. The people you thought loved you have gone. The people that you thought loved you betray you. You're sitting there on your own. You've got to start to figure out, God, I can, my, my, I'm going to determine to focus on my purpose and on my destiny. God, I'm going to be totally dependent upon you. Amen? Come on. I've known what that word means in the ministry. Totally dependent on God. I've got to come to a place where my, where my, my, my trust is totally in God. Totally. I don't trust man. I don't, trust, I don't, I don't even trust my car. Because it's made by man. I trust God. I mean, out of all the cars, probably Ford's the best one to trust. <laughs> and all the Ford people said, yay. Let's just read this in Psalm 73, 26 and um, uh, 73. Where am I? It says here in Psalm 73, in verse 26 and to 28, it says this, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the rock and firm strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You will destroy all who are false to you and like spiritual harlots depart from you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God and made him my refuge and I may tell all of your works. So I'm totally dependent on God. And the final thought this morning, the final thought is this. Your season will only last as long as you want it to. So if you are in a bad season or in a tough season, that season will only last as long as you want it to. Amen? How am I going to get out of that season? This is how I get out of that bad season. I get into agreement with God. And I say, God, I thank you that this season was here to form some character in me, but I'm not staying in my season. I'm moving into the next season. And so I'm going to start looking for ways I can get into that next season. Amen. Come on. Ruth, when she arrived in Judea, went to her mother-in-law and said, Naomi, there's a field over there. I'm going to go and glean in that field. I'm going to go and look for some leftover seed to feed us. And her mother-in-law said, go. You see, Ruth found a thing. She found a place, a position where she could, where she could serve her mother-in-law. She found a place where she could produce for her mother-in-law. And while she was gleaning... In another man's field, the, the owner of the field met her and said, who is this woman? Who is this Ruth working in my field? 
And they said, well, she's Sobedin Soen's daughter-in-law and she's come over from Moab. And Boaz looks at her and, and ministers to her. And because she's in the right field at the right time, her season changes from a season of poverty and survival to a season of possession. Hallelujah. Amen. You may, be just, you may just feel, I'm in the, I'm in the season, I'm just, I'm just raking up what people have left behind. God says, you just continue to serve in that capacity. You continue to press in. You continue to love the unlovely, and I'm going to bring you into a season of promotion and blessing in this next year. Amen? Amen. Come on, can I get somebody on the keyboard? Father God, we just pray this morning that you are, God, when you do things, they are substantial. I felt this morning the word that I have for you. I have a word for you this morning. And the word that I have for you this morning is this, that when you come up there to worship, it's like you are uncorking the new wine. You're like uncorking the, 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 the wine that God wants to pour out. I watched you, I think it was Friday morning when you did the worship there. And then this morning, and I felt the Lord say that because you are prepared to, 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 to truthfully bring my glory to the forefront, you are uncorking the new wine. God says, I'm going to start uncorking some new, uh, some new wine for you. You're coming into a season of newness, a freshness, a breakthrough time, a place of recovery, a place of healing and restoration like never before. Amen. Amen. Come on. God's got a new season ahead of you. Amen. Come on. God wants to do new things in your life. All things have passed away. All things have become new. God knows what He does with us. Sometimes we don't understand, but I'm telling you, God's hand's been upon your life. What's your name? God's hand's been on your life. You don't even realize the miracles that you've experienced. And I believe that you guys, are you guys together? You sure? <laughs> You are coming into a season of restoration. You're coming into a season where you're not just going to ask and ask and ask, but you're going to start to see God fulfill His purpose and promises to you. I'm telling you, what's your name? Marta, you're going to see some amazing things happen. It's not just going to be the same. Because you've been waiting on the Lord and crying out to God saying, God, I want to see my family healed. I want to see this thing restored. And God says, this is going to be a season of restoration. Amen. God knows what He's doing. He, does, he knows what's going on in your heart. He knows everything about you. God wants to give you joy in the morning. God wants to give you, fill you with such capacity. See, some of you in this room carry such capacity for the kingdom of God. God doesn't want you to have a window shopping experience. I don't know if you remember those days when I was a little kid, we'd all go down to town and we'd do window shopping. My dad would buy us a big cone, an ice cream, and put a flaky in the middle. And we walked down past the shops licking our flakies and our ice creams and everybody was window shopping. And all, all window shopping was, was we were just coveting everything in the shop. I wish, oh man, I wish I could have that. And do you see that? Oh, that's nice. And it's like, that's what we do with God. God says, you all have been window shopping for so many years. Why don't you come in the shop? Why don't you come and experience what I am? Stop looking at me through a window. Stop trying to talk about me, but you don't know who I am. I know who you are. I have a capacity for you. I want to heal your heart. I want to restore everything that the canker worm has eaten. You are my children. You are my bride. And I just feel, even for this man sitting here with this nice jersey on, what's your name, sir? Who are you with this morning? You just here by yourself? You know that man? Okay, just hold hands. You guys are an amazing couple. You are an amazing man. God has put such an amazing anointing on your life. To see what other people don't see. You have this amazing creative anointing on your life. And I just see how God's going to come and fill in all the, little, all the little areas of your life where you have just said, okay, God, I don't understand this. And so there's all these little areas, like little compartments in your heart that are just open. And God says, I'm going to fill every compartment of your heart with my glory and with my peace and with my joy. And you're going to know what it is to be a son of the King. 
And those questions that you've had about Father God and how fathers operate and God, how this, how can I relate to you as a father? I don't understand all that. God says, I'm going to start to pour out my spirit in you and you're going to know what it is to be a son of the living God. Amen. That man sitting there shaking his head. What's your name, sir? No, the man behind you. Your name is Zurich? That's a big name right there. Who's your wife? Thank you, Jesus. Just hold hands. There are dreams and desires in your life, sir, that God wants to bring to fulfillment. I saw you have such a heart for men. You have a heart to see men rise up into their destiny and purpose. And I just see how God and you and your wife are going to start to move in an area where God's going to bring you to a place where you're going to start mentoring and you're going to start training and start raising up young men. I just see men in, in your heart. And you've been saying, God, how do I raise up a generation? Because you have such vision upon your life. You have such vision. You say, God, I want to do this and I want to see this happen. And you're always coming up with all these different ideas. And God says, I'm going to take you out of a time of feeling just uh, like things have just, uh, it's like you've lost your traction. It's almost like, it's like seeds have lain in the soil, but they've never germinated. And God says, I'm going to bring you into a season of supernatural germination in terms of what you've carried and how you've carried things for people. Your wife, you, I don't know what your wife does, but you have an amazing teaching anointing on your life, man. Teaching anointing. You're very quick. You know, he's like the peacemaker. You're the troublemaker. <laughs> and you're always thinking about different things and you always want things to be done right because of that teaching anointing. You're a woman of truth. And God says, I want you to start to stir up that gift in your life to bring forth truth in the lives of people. Amen. Don't allow the season to bog you down. Don't say, I don't, Lord, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand the season. So you allow the season to come and overwhelm you. You need to say, God, I thank you that this season is going to be a season of opportunity. Amen. But I'm going to put the word of God and I'm going to bring the word of God into my season and I'm going to prophesy over my season in this area. Amen. Amen. Come on. This is not going to be a season that's going to overwhelm you, but it's going to be a season that's going to bless you. Amen. This is going to be a season that you'll be a blessing. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This lady sitting here with the blonde hair, is that your husband next to you? This lady over here, yes? Who, that man next to you over there? That man? This guy, okay. Thank you, Jesus. This is what I feel the Lord is saying to both of you. This is gonna be a year of seeing new growth, a season of new growth, a season of newness, Old things have passed away. New things are happening. Amen. And I just sense that this is going to be a season that God's going to define some things for you that you've not been able to understand. It's almost like you've just said, okay, God, let's just get into this zone that's going to be comfortable. We're just going to be comfortable. We just don't want anything to rock the boat. Well, God says, I'm bringing you out of your comfort zone and I'm going to start to pour out my spirit on you like never before. And those things that were difficult for you to understand are not going to be difficult for you anymore because I'm bringing a breakthrough in that area. All the constraints are going to be broken off you. Amen. Come on, this is going to be a new season for you. New season. You're going to find that you're going to carry compassion that you never thought you had, brother. A new compassion. Amen. You want to call out all your leaders? Um, sorry for, sorry for yeah. interrupting. I really feel that we should pray for people that are going through financial difficulties. Yes, absolutely. Sure. Bring them out, Joe. Ik voel rachtig dat hier van mij hard druk dat ons voor mensen bent wat in een moeilijke. If you are in a difficult financial situation, if you are in a difficult financial season, um, if you've lost your job, in between jobs, you've been retrenched, lost your business. So uh, I think there's quite a few people that fall into that category this morning. So I'd just like to ask you, and sorry for interrupting. Not a go ahead, brother. Um, it's I good. really feel that there's people here that are desperate, and they are desperate financially, Thank you, and Jesus. are really concerned. And Thank you, Jesus. may I ask you just to just to stand just for a moment, stand with me so that we can pray. And I'm 
Not at all. I'm going to ask David just to pray for you, but I, I really felt that this, uh, this was something that God was laying on my heart that we should pray for. Amen. I want to also want that man to stand right at the end of the, the guy in front of you. Yes, I want you to stand too. <clears throat> I just felt that God was really wanting to pour out His Spirit on you this morning. And I want to, let's, if, you sit, if those people are standing near you, just reach out your hand to them. Let's all get involved in this prayer this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we praise you. Just reach out your hand to them. <clears throat> Father God, your word says that we can ask. Lord, we can come and ask. And this morning, not only do we come and ask, but Lord, we come and we declare. We make decrees. The Bible says that when we decree a thing, it shall be established. And Father God, this morning that every person that has stood up because of a financial need, because of <clears throat> job opportunities that have been closed to them. God, this morning we pray in the name of Jesus that they would see the hand of God, that they would see, Lord, a restoration, that they would see favor in the midst of darkness. There would be light. There would be an answer. There would be a breakthrough. There would be favor. There would be blessing. Lord, I thank you this morning that, there would, that you do not withhold anything from your children. And God, I speak and I prophesy, I prophetically decree that every one of these people in the next week, in the next 48 hours, 72 hours, Lord, will start to see the breaking and anointing, Lord, the thing that will be broken over their life and that you'll pour out upon them such a blessing that they would not be able to contain it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. And I, I want to just, I want to take some liberty as well this morning. And say this, that over the last couple of years, we have seen 70 women, 70, and I want you to listen to this woman. I have seen 70 women that were barren, that were declared barren by doctors, that could not have children. Once we prayed for them, they had children. And I just felt in my spirit, if you were sitting here this morning and you've been married, married. <laughs> Very married. And if you, have, if you so wanted a child and you've battled in that area, I would just want you and your husband to stand quickly. I just felt in my spirit there were people here that really wanted a child. Father God, I thank you. I want to tell you, I wish I can, I can show you a video. There's a video on my phone, but it's too small. We can't hook it up yet. But I carry, I carry three or four of those videos with me that we've actually videoed where people have testified, whether they've waited 11 years, 17 years, 10 years, and they could never fall pregnant. And you know this morning, I wanna declare over your life, and then we're gonna pray. I wanna declare to you this morning that you are not barren. You are not barren in Jesus' name. You are not barren. And so Father, this morning in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we can reach out to these people that Lord, we can decree, and I, as the husbands, I want you to lay your hands on your stomach, and your wife's stomach. Just lay hands on her stomach. Not her kidneys, her stomach. <laughs> and we're gonna pray this morning. And we're standing in agreement this morning that there'll be one, two, three, four, five, six babies born soon. Father God, we decree right now that that womb will be open. God, that barrenness will be broken. And we prophesy and declare and decree right now in the name of Jesus that these women, these couples will have the joy of seeing a baby born in their household. In Jesus' name and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting that we can do that? Isn't that exciting? What do you think God's will is? You think God's will is for somebody to go through life not having the joy of having a baby? You think that's God's will? God's will is that we go through life being a testimony of His glory and His goodness. How good is it? How good would it be if people got healed and delivered and we actually had a testimony? Amen. Amen. The greatest joy I've had in my life is to see people healed. We've had people's eyes opened, ears opened. Hands that were all uh, withered up, opened. Club feet healed. Sugar diabetes healed. 
people that were on uh, on uh, dialysis. Now, let me tell you right now, I understand that we need doctors. I love doctors and I honor doctors. But let me tell you, you cannot compare with a great physician, Jesus. Amen. So, Father God, we just thank you. Do you want to call your leaders out so we can start praying for them? Father God, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. This lady sitting here with the blue um, top on, are you guys together as a family? Is that your daughter, your two daughters? What is your name? Sandra. I, I just felt this morning like you, you've been in a season and you've just been saying, God, I, I just, I want to see some things change in this season. It can't just be the same, the same, the same. And I just saw like a door open and, and, and a person didn't walk out. I just saw the, the power of God as the door opened. I saw the power, it's like the power of God fell on into your household. The power, the purpose, the healing, the restoration, all the stuff. It's like God's gonna bring such peace in your household. And I felt the Lord say, you're not to worry about your daughters. God is in control. God is moving in their lives. God is going to do some amazing stuff through them and in them and around them. Amen. Amen. And so I just felt just the Lord saying, just encourage that woman. This is going to be the greatest season of your life. In Jesus' name. Okay. Just going to make a nice long line here. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you sense God already spoke to you about this message this morning? How many of you feel that you've got to discern your season a little bit better? Amen? Because I'm telling you guys, you guys, listen to me. God loves you so much that this season is going to be a season that's going to produce for you. This is going to be a producing season for you. You and your husband, producing season. This is going to be a season where God's going to open up the windows of heaven over your life. Amen? You guys are going to start to see some things that you never thought you'd been, you've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and God says, now I'm going to release some things. Amen? I'm going to make some things possible for you. Okay, so what I'm doing with the leaders this morning, I'm just going to lay hands on you this morning, and I'm going to bring an impartation. And I believe that everything you've carried will increase a hundredfold. I want you to hear that again. I, I, I believe that everything you've carried will increase a hundredfold. Everything you've carried will increase a hundredfold. Everything you've desired to be, all the, all the dreams you've had, God says, I'll bring into a reality. Amen. I believe that the stuff you've waited for will be accelerated. Because you've been waiting and crying out to God and many times even thought, well, maybe I, maybe I missed it with God. Maybe I should have done this. Let me tell you today, there is such favor on your life because in this season, you have made a decision to serve and God says, in that role, I'm gonna bless you and minister to you. Come on, just a hundredfold. How many of you wanna see a hundredfold return? How many of you wanna see God move a hundredfold more in your life? And so when I lay hands on you, I'm just not asking God for a little bitty inch stuff. I'm asking God for the power of God to come on your life, on your mind and on your spirit. Amen. What's your name? Corey. Corey, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Increase, a hundredfold increase. A hundredfold increase. In Jesus' name, a hundredfold increase. Supernatural. Supernatural, God. Thank you, mighty God, for your goodness, Lord, that you pour out your spirit upon their lives. Supernatural increase like never before, to go higher with you. Lord, an impartation of every anointing and every gifting and understanding, Lord, that she would need in this season. Thank you, Jesus. Supernatural. A supernatural insight, supernatural understanding. And Father God, because not, not because of me, but because of you, Lord, the apostolic 
the apostolic anointing this morning. Lord, I thank you that because there's an apostolic anointing in this place, God, that we can lay hands on people. And Lord, that we can ask for impartation, an impartation, great impartation, greater. Are you guys together? Hold hands. Look at me. I believe today, I need to share this with you, that your physical body will come into line with God. Your physical body will come into line. And you are healed in Jesus' name. This is not going to be a season of fear and apprehension and just wondering. But God says, no, the minute I came and stood in front of you, the Lord said, this man needs to be healed. Just come a little closer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You and your household and your family and your grandchildren. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I just see like a whole family thing God doing. Thank you, Lord. Are you by yourself? Bring your wife here. If you've got a husband and your wife standing up here, and I want the husbands and wives to come stand together. Quickly. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name? Esmeralda, you keep this guy straight. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to see such an overflow of what God's doing with you guys. It's not just going to be a little drop out of the host pipe. But God is going to start to pour out His Spirit and pour out His Spirit and you're going to see your husband prophesy. She's going to dream the dreams and you're going to prophesy. Amen. Come a little closer because the prophetic on you, just stand next to Him in Jesus' name. Father, we thank You. I see such a formidable team on You, such a formidable team coming together. It's like I see like an arrowhead coming together, but it's seamless, seamless. And God says, you're going to move in the power of my, of my word. You're going to start to move in your worship. And I just see this prophetic thing coming out of you. And there will be a prophetic uh, worship coming forth. There will be free worship like never before. Because that's what you so desired in your life. Father, we thank you that you're going to start to show her, God, that she also um, 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 contributes so much more than she thinks she does in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come, both of you. What's your name? Andrew? You guys are such a blessing. You have such a beautiful, beautiful heart. And sometimes you're just happy to be in, on the backstage. But God says, son, I'm going to bring you to the front stage. And people are going to start to know that you carry such beautiful treasure deep down inside of you. But we're going to pray for an impartation today that you'll never look back. You'll never drive looking in your review mirror, but God says, I'm going to give you such an open screen of what I'm going to do with you and through you as a couple. And you will fulfill your destiny and accomplish all that I've set for you to do. Amen. I feel the Lord this year is going to give you increase. Supernatural increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, supernatural manifestation, supernatural. God, an increase, an impartation, the giftings, the revelation, the truth that she needs. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Those shoes fit you. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. (laughs) I bought myself some shoes in America, but really they had his name on it. And they didn't fit me. I was like Cinderella trying to put them on. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, let me tell you, I travel all around the world and I meet many thousands of people. But let me tell you, you stand out in the crowd. You stand out in the crowd. You know why? Because of your servant's heart. And so, Father, I thank you for this precious man. Bless him. Minister to him. Give him the desires of his heart, Lord in every aspect, in Jesus' name. Supernatural, increase. Increase in the levels of your anointing, gifting. It's like God has given you a brilliant mind. You have a brilliant mind, and God says you need to use it. Amen? 
So come here a little closer. Father, in Jesus' name, that she'll be like an Esther. She'll be like a Deborah. Lord, she'll be like um, um, the woman of old, God, and the, the Proverbs 33 woman. Thank you, Lord, that she's always ready to avail of herself. So Lord, even today, I pray that you would destroy everything the enemy has tried to put on her. But God, that you will walk in all your glory and your power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready for the next season? Because it's going to be bigger than you ever thought it would be. Because sometimes you feel like, Lord, I feel like I'm left behind. Everybody's up there 200,000 miles away and I'm over here and I have to catch up. God says, you're not ever going to play catch up again. You're going to be right where God wants you to be. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Impartation. Impartation. Supernatural. I want to tell you something. You are so far advanced in terms of your age and the thing that God wants you to do. And I just felt if you will just keep on knocking, God's going to just got to flow through you and the prophetic will start to rise up inside of you. And you're going to have words and you're going to be able to interpret dreams. And people will come and say, can you interpret this dream? Can you interpret that? Because that's what you're going to be operating in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just lift up your head. Just lift your head up. The Bible says God is the lifter of your head. You need to see yourself as a, as a prince in the kingdom. You're a man of God. And God's going to start to put some truths in you and some character in you. And I see like this leadership anointing coming out of you. His leadership on you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bringing the spoils out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. God has anointed you to be in a marketplace apostle on your mountain, both of you. And not only will you be on the mountain of commerce, but you'll, you'll rule from the mountain of religion, the mountain of family, the mountain of government, the mountain of education, all those different mountains. God's going to start to give you a foothold in those mountains. Amen. And God's going to increase your ability to see. And I even saw you creating some stuff, developing some things that other people have not developed. That's going to be a mighty source of income to you. Amen. Amen. And you're going to have the patent to it. You're going to have all the money. You're going to have the finances. And I just see this product or this thing is going to really develop. God's going to cause you to develop it. And it's going to be a blessing to nations. Thank you, Lord. Increase. Increase. God doesn't, listen to me, God doesn't just give you enough. He fills us overflow. It's like overflowing. Amen? There's never an end. And God's going to start to show you things in the Spirit and give you divine inspiration. That means there's some downloads coming that's going to just absolutely be amazing on what God's going to do in this nation. Amen? I'm so tired of the naysayers. When can we start prophesying blessing over South Africa? Amen. Amen. When can we start speaking life over South Africa? Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God's taking off, off all the restrictions. All the restrictions. And I just see God saying, I'm going to start a download and impartation over you. And I just see you. Yes, you know, people say he's, he's like the youth pastor. But I just felt to say, you are going to become a spiritual father. To many people, white, black, colored, green, yellow, all the colors. And God's going to start to show you how to operate from the Father's heart. Because you learn to follow well. Because you've learned to follow well, God says you'll learn to lead well. To so receive it today, brother. Receive it. Double portion. Double portion anointing. Double portion. Double portion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. More than enough. Pressed down. Shaken about and running over. 
Amen, come on. Because you have said to the Lord, God, I'm gonna give you every area of my life. I'm gonna give you every area of my heart. You have, you have opened up the capacity of your heart and of your mind and of your being to carry as much of God as you can. And because you've said that, God says, watch me. I will give you things in the night hours. I will speak to you like Abraham and Moses and all those apostles of old. God says, I will speak to you face to face. Amen. And so get ready. And it's not just for your husband, but even in your, cons you're very conservative and almost very shy. And God says, even in that time, I'm going to speak to you some things that you're going to be able to share with him. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you a gift of discernment and you're going to see things and you're going to say to him, you know, I just saw this and I saw that. And he's going to be overwhelmed because it's almost like God is going to be speaking to you guys the identical things. Because you don't speak a lot. People don't think you hear a lot, but you actually see and hear a whole lot of things. Amen. So get ready. Be ready, my brother. In Jesus name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I just felt the Lord say, put the plow in the ground, put the plow in the ground and don't look back. Just put the plow in the ground and keep on plowing, keep on pushing, keep on walking this walk. Don't look back because as you step into this field, not only am I going to give you the seed, not only am I going to give you the strength to plow, but I'm going to start to widen the field and widen the field and widen the field because my heart has never changed according to the souls of men. And God says, you are going after the souls of men. You're going after the hearts of men. And the very thing that I treasure is the very thing you treasure. And because you treasure what I treasure, God says, watch what I will do through you and in you and around you in this season. I am going to release my glory. I'm going to release my favor. I'm going to release my blessing. I'm going to release anointings and mantles that you thought you'd never walk in. Because the Lord says, I've tested you and I've not found you wanting. So be encouraged in the season because he's increasing. He's increasing what you're carrying. God says there's a great impartation coming upon you and where times that you've wanted to be bold and you could not be bold. I just saw like this godly boldness come on you and you're gonna stand up and you're gonna speak the word of the Lord and you're gonna, you're gonna be able to break down that, that barrier between people and their mind and women in ministry and all that stuff that comes with this thing. God says you're gonna break the barrier Areas of religion that have forced women not be able to get on the platform. But God says, I'm bringing you onto the platform. And when you open your mouth and you speak my word, many people will be delivered and set free in this season. So don't hold back anymore, my daughter. Step up and know that I'm with you in this season. For I'm giving you the mantle and the anointing of boldness to bring people into their, into their freedom, out of a slavery into freedom in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you hold the, this is what I saw. Just open your hands. Just put your hands like this. I saw God put a new GPS in your hands. And the old GPS you had was just going, and, and it's lost all its bearings. And God says, no, I'm replacing your old GPS with a new GPS, but this time I'm putting in the coordinates. You're not gonna, you're not gonna have dry runs. You're not going to be like a guy flying a kite. Well, maybe I should fly it there and maybe the wind and maybe like a fisherman, you have to move your fishing rod up and down the river. No, God says you'll never have to do that for I will lead you by my spirit. I will lead you with joy. I'd lead you in peace. I would lead you. God says, just understand that I'm going to put my, my GPS in your heart and I'm going to lead you. I'm going to wake you up in the morning and speak to you. I'm going to speak to you during the day. I'll speak to you in the night hours. And if you will put your plow in the soil and keep on plowing, God says, I will widen the field. I will, I will, you will possess the land. You, it'll go to the left and to the right and you'll never need to worry. God says, because every seed you plant will come to the surface. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God, give God a hand. Amen. Okay, I'm done. Well done. She'll be glad you'll have a seat for Ochen.
Kom ons staan en dan wat vangen hier is hier. Vader, ons wil net kom sê. Ek het ook vir oogend hier gesit en ek het nie een specifieke woord gekry nie. Ek is nie daak, ek is daak nie specifiek bedien nie. Maar dankie Heere dat u elke liewe een wat hier is, dat u hulle raak sê. Heere, ons dink so aan Psalm 34 wat David sê, ek is een van die elendiges wat geroep het. Die Heere het gesien, die Heere het gehoor, Maar die Heere het nie net gesien en nie net gehoor nie, maar hy het ook geantwoord. En Heere, daarom, dank je dat die woord vir ons sê, in die Nieuwe Testament, dat elke haar op ons kop is geteld. So Heere, dank je dat ons vir ochend kan weet, dat elke liewe een wat hier is, Heere, jy is tot in die fijnste detail vertrouwd en bekend met hulle omstandig, Heere. En dankie vader, dat u vir ochend sê, ek is. Hier een paar duizend jaar terug het u vir Mooses gesê, ek is. En dan denk hy, ou, goeie griet, wat? Kon u rechtig nie aan iets beters gedink het om vir hom te sê nie. Maar jyre, dankie dat u vir ochend vir elkeen sê, die hare op jou kop is getel. En ek is. Ek is genoeg. Ek is die een wat voorsien. Ek is die een wat hoor. Ek is die een wat omgee. Ek is die een wat sorg. Ek is die een wat beskerm. Ek is die een, waar as die een, waar as die een deur toemaak, een ander deur sal oopmaak. En vir ochend roep ek die naam van Jesus Christus, oor elkeen van julle uit. En ek verklaar, ek is, is saam met jou, by jou, met jou, boe jou, om jou, onder jou, deur jou. As jy hier uitstap, weet, ek is, Ek is die voorsiening. Ek is die geneesheer. Ek is die een wat vry maak. Ek is die een wat die trane afdroog. Ek is die een wat herstel bring. Ek is die een wat restauratie bring. Ek is die een wat stikkende verhoudings recht maak. Ek is die een wat stikkende bezighede weer herstel. Dankie vader. Ek sien elkeen wat hier is vir ochend. Met die teenwoordigheid van ek is mag jy vandag huis toe gaan, met die wete, dat ek is, saam jou is, met jou is, by jou is. Ontvang hier die Seen, in die naam van die Vader, en die Seen, en die Heilige Geest, en allemaal sê, Amen.